Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fact Quarter Shop and I've been quilting for 25 years, but I've never tried the type of quilt I'm gonna make today. So at the beginning of 2023, we started a Quilt Goals 2023 on our blog, The Jolly Jabber, and we challenged different quilters from the community to try something different they've never tried before. And so this month it's my turn and I decided I am going to make a clamshell quilt. So we're gonna try it. I've never tried it before. We're gonna see how this works out. I'm a little bit nervous, but let's see how this goes. The clamshell quilt is a traditional quilt with curves and I've never attempted it. But Latifa Shafir has a full line of rulers and patterns of clamshell quilts. She's a modern quilter with an engineering background and she's also a co-founder of the Modern Quilt Guild. So I'm excited and nervous to try this with her six inch clammy ruler and the glam clam quilt pattern. Because this is totally new for me, I am going to just make a pillow top that comes out about 18 by 18. I picked some fabric that I love, which is Lighthearted by Camille Ross Kelly. And I love this fabric so much that I know it will keep me motivated to work with curved piecing and to actually finish my project. But because it's my first one, I am just gonna go small with an 18 inch square. And drop a comment below and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and let me know what your quilt goal for 2023 will be. So for the first step in this, Latifa has a whole video series on the clammy ruler. So I have watched several of those videos. We will link them below, but that's kind of what I did as far as research beforehand. But this is the first time I'm looking at the pattern. And when you look at the pattern, it has all her different sizes of rulers. So, you know, 16, 12, 10, nine, eight, six. I'm gonna start with a six because it's smaller. I feel like it'll be easier. And what I'm gonna do is I decided I'm just gonna do 18 inches by 18 inches. This is a six inch ruler, so I really need to do three by three. So I'm gonna take this and kind of draw a line on here to figure out what I need to cut. So on here, she has baby throw twin full queen king for all of her sizes, but like I said, I wanna start small. So I'm just gonna mark at the three inch and the three inch. So that is about the size I'm going to be making. So my line is a little bit off, maybe it goes a little bit further down, but you get the idea. That is kind of the area I'm going to be making. So from there, I'm going to figure out what I need to cut. And if you go further in, she's got lots of tips and she tells you what you need to cut. There are whole clamshells, top lefts, top rights, top centers, left half, right half, and all of this is clearly in her pattern. So you're gonna follow that. So I am going to use that and figure out what I need to cut for my 18 inch square pillow top. So for the whole clams, that's the easiest one. So I need to make 13 of those. Now B1 is your top left. I need to make one of those. Top right is over here, but really that's gonna be right here. This is gonna be my top right now. So then I'm gonna do a top right. I need to cut one. Then I need to do a bottom left, which is down here, and a bottom right. So that kind of covers the corners. Now that I have the whole clamshells and the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, I need to figure out my remaining pieces. So right here, in between here, these two are gonna be your top centers. So you're gonna do two of those. And then you're also gonna to need to do right here, side left and side right. And then I'm gonna to need to do on this bottom row, I'm gonna to need to do bottom centers. And I'm gonna do two of those. Now, if you are going to start and just do the baby, Everything is written out for you. So you've got your top left, your top right, your top center, side left, side right, bottom left, bottom right, bottom center. What I've done is just done that, drawn my line, figured out what I need to do. So that's what I do to do my 18 inch square, just because I think attempting something this big might be a little hard. So I've just converted this here and that's what I'm gonna start with. So I'm going to use the clammy six inch ruler and one thing that I learned from Latifa's videos to use a 28 millimeter rotary cutter because you can really get around the curves better. And from there, what I've done is I've gone to my computer 
and I've already picked my fabrics and drawn out where everything needs to go. This is what I work with when I make any type of quilt. I draw it out so that when I'm cutting, all I have to do is follow. We're gonna be starting with bad eights. Really, I only need 10 inch squares, but this is the fabric that we had. So this is what we're gonna lay out. So basically, I'm gonna just start and I'm gonna lay out my fabrics visually and go from there. Okay, so I have placed all of my fabric similar to what I designed. You know, you can change it if, if you're going, like this one was used twice, I changed it to a different fabric, that's totally fine. But let me kind of show you again where all the pieces are. These are your hole clams in the center. Top left, top right, top centers, side left, side right, bottom left, bottom right, bottom centers. So that is your placement. And if you look at your diagram, you're gonna look at like the letters A, B, C, D, and then you just look and it's very graphically, very easy for you to see. So from here, I'm gonna get a second design board, but I'm going to flip to my top left and top right. And like I said, I need one of each. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull this fabric to cut my top left and I'm gonna start reading this and following this for the cutting. And I'll just be pulling from this board as I go. Now one thing that Latifa recommends is using a rotating mat. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my fabric is starched. I'm gonna just cut this off so I don't have too much bulk. So now looking at the pattern, what you need to do is put your top right face up your top left face down, and here I'm going to cut this where this is a straight 90 degree angle. Okay, so now that I'm learning to cut, I'm, I've skipped a step. So I need to go back and I need to do my initial cut at five and a quarter inches square. So I missed that step. So let me go ahead and do that real quick so that I don't have too much. And since this is the first time doing it, this is why we're doing it live. So before I go on, I'm gonna have to take all of my pieces and cut them down to five and a quarter inches square. Now it makes more sense. Okay, so I have it lined up just like her diagram. I have the left line and the top line, and then right here I've got a little bit of excess. So first, we're gonna just be cutting this circle right here. This right here is gonna be discarded, so you can save that for another project. Right here, I do need that to be lined up, and it's not perfect, so I'm going to cut that just so it's lined up perfectly with that. And then from here, I have my top left and my top right, one of each. I'm doing this on a design board just so visually I can kind of spatially see it. So now that I've cut that, I'm gonna go to my top center. I have two that I'm gonna cut. That's why I'm using design boards and these two are my top centers. I need to make my first cut five and a quarter by six and a half, so this one's different. And I'm not going to pay attention to the direction of the stripe just because this is my first time doing it. And so if I paid attention, I would probably not even have it the right direction. So to me, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut this five and a quarter by six and a half. And like I said, we're starting with too much fabric. That's okay. We'll save it for another project. So this I technically could just cut with my regular rotary cutter. That's 45 millimeter, but since I have this one out, I'm just gonna use this one. So I've got that. Now let's read the instructions. Center the clammy on top of the pre-cut fabric. Align the tip with the bottom raw edge. Checking that the grid is aligned with the other three raw edges. Okay, so we're gonna line this, this, and this. Cut only the bottom left and right curved edges. So I'm gonna be cutting here and here, and I'm gonna get this piece. So I'm gonna kinda turn it a little bit. And Latifa recommends holding your rotary cutter straight instead of curved. And there are some registration marks that we're gonna add, but I decided we're gonna do those after I cut everything so I don't get too overwhelmed or too confused. Right now, I'm just trying to get my quilt cut correctly. That will go here and here. And you can see, you know, they're gonna have to overlap, but right now, visually, I'm just laying them out. So I've got that top row cut. So we're doing good. Now we have to cut our side left and side right. So that would be these two right here and these two. So I'm gonna pull those out. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the five and a quarter by six and a half so that that is done first. For the side left paste fabrics right side up, my side lefts are these two. So this is going to be right side up. And then my side rights are going to be right side down. Then I'm going to cut five and a quarter by six and a half. And another reason we started with a lot of fabric is I was afraid if we started with a layer cake, if I make a mistake, I wouldn't have enough to fix. Sometimes if you're new at something, a tip would be buy too much fabric because I'm certain at some point in this, there's going to be a mistake and I'm going to have to redo. For the side left, place the fabric right side down. We've done that. Place the clammy on top of your fabric and align the tip and right hand sides with raw edges. So that means this is the tip and this is the right. Okay, so I have this aligned incorrectly. So move this this way, which is why I said I'm not gonna pay attention to the direction of the fabrics because if I did, that would have been wrong. And so I've lined the tip and this right here. And then it says, cut only the right upper and lower curved edges. So I'm gonna cut this and this. And I'm not used to cutting with a 28 millimeter, so sometimes it's a little hard. And then from here, cut away from yourself. So these are my rights and these are my lefts. So this one seems like it's a lot of cutting, but because the pattern is so well written, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I haven't gotten lost too far yet. So I've done this. Now we're gonna move to page 12. Bottom left and bottom right. So this is my bottom left, this is my bottom right. Place the fabrics wrong sides together with bottom left on top. Your bottom right is right side up. Your bottom left is right side down. So I need a five and a quarter inch square. So I've lined it up this way and I'm gonna just cut right here. So then this is your bottom left and this is your bottom right. So having this photo really keeps me in the right spot. Um, just following it as I go. So my two bottom centers are right here. We're gonna cut six and a half by five and a quarter and we're gonna have both fabrics right sides up. This one I'm gonna cut five and a quarter by six and a half. Okay, so I have my fabrics right sides up. Center the clammy on top of your fabric, aligning the top and both sides. So I've got the top here and the sides here, and I'm gonna cut this top circle. And these are our bottom centers that go here. Okay, so I miss cutting the whole clamshells and just looking at it, I wish there was an image, but we're gonna cut all sides. So because we're doing that, I am not gonna cut a square. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna do one row at a time and I'll kind of show you and we'll see if it works. So I'm gonna do three at a time or whatever a row is. This is my top row. Since I'm cutting all the sides, I don't really feel like I need to cut a square or a rectangle because I don't need any lines to line it up with in terms of side lines. So I'm going to just cut all the sides. And this 28 millimeter, it's pretty tricky. I'm having a hard time getting it through because I'm not used to using it. Okay, so I thought I was pulling from the rows, but I actually had my board rotated, so I pulled from the columns. But anyway, these go this way, so that's why having a photo is helpful. Basically, just cut them. I'm gonna cut all the remaining of these and we'll be right back. So I have everything laid out here and I just don't think my design board is big enough to really get the full effect of what I'm trying to do. So to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna lay it out on my mat because visually I think I'll be able to follow it better and make sure everything really is in the right spot. And really what I'm trying to do is do it row by row. And after I lay it out, we'll start piecing row by row. And what I decided is I'm gonna do my registration marks as I go 
here you'll really be able to see how this is going to come together and i will say i've never sewn with curves before so we'll see how this turns out so our first row is going to be sewing these together so what i'm going to do is i need to do registration marks so i'm going to go to that section okay so one thing that i learned in her videos is your registration marks that are on the top you mark on the top side of the fabric the registrations on the side go on the wrong side of the fabric so from here i'm going to put this ruler on here and i'm going to mark right here you can either mark with a pen that will erase or you can just fold your fabrics but i think marking will work better for me and as I do that, I'm gonna bring my design board over and set this in the order it's gonna be sewn. And I'm just doing it row by row because mentally that's how my mind works a little bit better. And then if I don't like the way I've marked, I can change methods as I get further down because I've never done this before. What if I don't like the way I'm marking? And all the information on the registration marks on this pattern is on page 14. And like I said, since these are on the curve, they go on the wrong side. Of your fabric and the pattern has you do all the registration marks at one time so it's totally up to you what you want to try to do so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these two together I'm gonna back stitch at the top and the bottom I'm gonna do that all the way across you'll see me sew it and then we're going to press open and when I get to the sewing machine I will use pins or I might not we'll see but definitely back stitch at the beginning and the end So from here, I've got these pin marks. I don't want those to disappear because if they disappear, I'll have to rewrite them. So I'm not gonna set my seams. I'm just going to open my seams, press, and just not get my iron over to this section. So they're pressed and I have not messed up my marks. So I'll go back to my table. Okay, so I've got this top row done. I'm gonna move to my second row. My second row is these three. And this time, the way that you mark your registration is the top is on the front, the bottom is on the back. So it will look just like this. There's a total of five, three on the top and two on the bottom. Okay, so if you wanna see how to crease your fabrics and not use marks, you can watch Latifah's videos that we've linked below. I just did not trust myself enough to do that, so I figured I would probably be better off trying the pen method instead. And I'm using the friction pen. The ink should disappear with heat. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna get my design board, put this down, add these three, and we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna talk through the next steps. So in the instructions, it says row one and all odd rows are made up of whole clamshells. So one clamshell in at a time from left to right. When each row is completed, press seams down toward the clamshell tips. So we'll be going from left to right. Okay, so we have our row one and we have our first whole clamshell. I'm gonna turn my row one right side down. I'm gonna take this clamshell. I'm going to turn it where the point is always facing up and my fabric is always right side up right here i'm going to put this together right here i'm going to put a little pin just so it stays now i can see visually my tip is on that top left that's how you know that that's over there you can either do this with your fingers or with a pin first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put this in the machine and start sewing three stitches then i'm going to try to line up my registration mark because i don't think that was working what i was doing before i'm going to pin just because i think it'll be easier and then this is gonna be all about maneuvering the fabric and manipulating the fabric and getting it to go over the curve. I'm gonna keep my needle down. Okay, now that I've got to my first registration mark, I'm going to move this over and I've got a second registration mark and I'm gonna line up the center of this seam with that registration mark. And what I'm trying to do is just maneuver this and not get pleats and just go one or two stitches at a time. Okay. 
and I'm just manipulating the top and the back just with my hands. Line up my registration marks, pin, and just sew to that Okay, when you get to the last registration mark, you wanna take the tip and pin that to the very bottom of your whole clamshell. Okay, so from the front, this is what it looks like. I don't have any pleats, I don't think. Right there, I think these will iron out. I don't think there's any pleats. And your goal is to, at the very end, to be at a straight angle, which somehow I did, and be at a straight angle here. I'm gonna continue and add the next two before I press. So again, place your row right side down, clamshell right side up, tip to the top left, place it under, and then we're gonna make a few stitches first. And really, you just wanna keep this really nice and straight on that angle, because that will help when you add the next row. Okay, so from there, got a few stitches in, mark your registration, do the same thing. I'm gonna do the entire row and we'll see how that looks. So right there, it does kind of look like I have some little tiny, they look like they might be puckers, but the puckers are outside of the seam. So I think those are fine. I think those will iron out. Maybe I just need to be a little bit more careful and I'm gonna add the third one. So I've got my top row done and now I've added my first row and the instructions say we're gonna press toward the clamshell. I wanna make sure that these registration marks don't get ironed over, but if they do, I can always put them back with a friction pin. What I'm gonna do is just place this, finger press it down really nice, and just go around the curve. And so I just ironed it really flat so I don't have any duck pleats. Okay, so I went to the sewing machine and I realized I don't have any of my registration marks done. So what I've decided is I'm gonna mark the tops, not the bottoms, because those are just gonna disappear. So I'm going to mark those before I go try to sew this together. And I'm just gonna do the top, just because to me that's gonna work better. And it'll save time, not doing it twice. So now you're gonna take your row right side down, your left clam, you're gonna have it right side up, put the tip facing up, and then you're gonna rotate it because this is gonna fit together right here. Okay, so this part was really confusing for me. So I've decided to just lay it right side up the way it's gonna go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this right side down on here and I'm gonna just start sewing right here. To me, that visually works. And I'm gonna take two stitches. Then I'm gonna mark the registration and keep sewing. So I'm going to just actually hold this because it's kind of straight. I'm just going to do that one quick. And now I'm starting to go around the curve. So then I will start messing with my fabrics, hoping I don't run over my finger. So that one was much harder and it's definitely not as straight. But I think in the end it'll look okay, but at the end I did somehow manage to get that flat. So I'm just gonna keep going and get this row done. It is going very, very slow. So right side down, fabric up, tip to the outside, and pin, or just start sewing right here. Okay, so I've gotta add my very last piece. So I'm gonna do right side down, this right side up. Assume, just kind of pretend you have the rest of your clamshell. You're gonna do that same thing and you're gonna put this right here, the clamshell part. So your tip is gonna kinda of go like this. So now I'm just gonna iron the same way, but this time, since I haven't done my registration marks, it won't matter. I can just go little by little, and I haven't seen any puckers yet. Okay. 
Then from here, just keep doing the same thing. Mark your registration lines, and then your third row, you're gonna to put together just like your second. Your fourth row, you're gonna do, or your fifth row, you're gonna do just like your third. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those two rows, and then we'll do the bottom row. Okay, so I have everything done except my bottom row. We're gonna also go left to right, and I'll show you um, these two, we'll just do the same way we've been doing, and then these two, we'll just have to orient a little bit differently. That's gonna be your hardest part of your bottom row. Okay, so I rolled this just to get it out of the way, and then your bottom left is gonna go right here, and when you sew this on, your bottom is gonna go further down than your tip, and that is the way it's supposed to be. So you'll just leave it like that, and then you're just gonna start sewing here. You'll flip it over and start sewing. Okay, so you can see that this bottom left is a lot longer and then this clamshell is a lot longer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start just like this and you're gonna pin this top left and you're gonna take a few stitches and then you're going to line up the registration mark on your clam with where your stitches stopped previously. Then from there, you'll just keep going and line up your registration marks just like you were. Okay, so I have this all sewn. It took me about three hours. And what the instructions say is to trim a quarter inch away from the outside of the whole clamshells. But I'm nervous to do that. So what I'm gonna do is use a friction pen like I always do. And I'm going to measure a quarter inch away from the edge of the clamshells. And of course, it's not gonna come out perfect because this is a circular design. So I'm just gonna kinda guess before I cut anything. I'm just gonna draw some friction lines. So from right there, I'm trimming a quarter inch away from there. And you could trim a little bit more than a quarter inch if you want. So I can't tell where the end of the whole shells are here or where it is. So what I'm gonna do is put this 18 and a half inch square ruler, cause this is supposed to be 18 and a half inches and see how this lands. Yeah, it lands pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is scoot this down where I can see it and I'm a quarter inch on each side, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna move it up a little bit so that less of the bottom shows. So this looks really good, I'm gonna just trim. And I'm gonna rotate. Okay, so hopefully I trimmed this right. I'm gonna send this off to a long arm quilter. I'm gonna get it quilted with soft and stable so that it is nice and puffy. And at the end of the video, you'll get to see how it looks quilted. Now my tips for this is to, of course, keep your needle down as you're going. Using the stiletto by Annie really helped me more than I thought it would. Make sure you're pinning at every registration mark. And when I was pressing, after I pressed from the front, I made sure everything laid flat on the back before I added the next row. I would say doing this is really kind of a labor of love. It's very slow. So if you're a fast sewer like I am, you just have to go slow and steady. This might be a quilt where you do, you know, one row a week or one row a day because kind of doing the curves over and over, your eyes can get crossed a little bit. Another thing is I do think that starching really helped this so that it didn't start fraying too much because you'll see that when you're pulling that with the stiletto and just pulling your fabrics a lot, you do get a lot of fraying. So this definitely falls into the done but not perfect. It actually came out a lot better than I thought it would. I didn't have as many puckers as I thought I would. So I actually think it was harder than I thought, but it came out better than I thought. And this is a great quilt to remember. It's always good to learn new things. You never know what you can learn and what you might like and what you might not like. So definitely try this quilt. Let me know what you think. And if you have any tips for it, put them in the comment box 
and I'll see you every Friday for my weekly live streams. See you then.